It's an exciting sector. Yeah, thanks, guys. We're uh, going to jump into the esports gaming sector. Alpha Esports has had uh, quite the year and continues to uh, expand over the beginning of this new year and into the second half. Now, Jonathan Anastas, chairman of the board of Alpha Esports, with us today to discuss the company. It's great to uh, have you. First off, Jonathan, I know I'm pretty sure you're on the West Coast, so it is a little bit early. So thanks for doing this. First off, uh, give us a little introduction, I guess, to uh, Alpha Esports. Sure. So first, great to be here. I love the energy of this show. So Alpha Esports is an esports gaming platform where people come on and play competitively for prizes, to build statistics, to build their skill sets, to go on and become better esports players. And you've had um, quite the career in the esports and gaming sector itself. Why don't you give everyone a little bit of a uh, background as far as what got you started in this sector and maybe why now was the right time to uh, branch off into Alpha Esports? Sure, happy to do that. So I've actually been in the gaming sector for over a decade as a senior executive and in esports since kind of day one. I joined Alpha first as a board member and now as board chair because I believed in the mission, I believed in the platform, and of course I believe in the category because I'm participating in it. Um, most notably, I spent five years at Activision, where I was the global head of social and digital at a time where the company went to an over $50 billion valuation and Call of Duty became over a $10 billion franchise. I was the global head of marketing at Atari when we were traded on the French exchange. I'm currently the CMO in my day gig at One Esports. And I've seen this go from a zero category to a billion dollar category. And I've seen these gaming platforms like Alpha really attract a large player base as more and more gamers come to the category. Let's talk a little bit about that growth because we've seen uh, just exponential growth in this sector, as we said, you know, over the past year, two years, specifically throughout the pandemic. What do you feel has really driven that and what has, you know, kept that momentum going here, even as, you know, we see economies starting to reopen and people getting back to their normal lives a bit? Sure. So the interesting thing is this was a billion dollar category or just under a billion before the pandemic. Right. And the amazing thing is gaming exploded during the pandemic in terms of time spent and time watched, you know, and that is held interestingly as things reopened. Right. Like there was some belief that, you know, it was going to be hard for the big game publishers and the big gaming platforms to hold these incredible record numbers. But as you see earnings happening, you know, for the big publicly traded companies like my alum, Activision, time spent is holding or going up, which is really good news for this for the sector. Um, esports took a little bit of a hit during the pandemic because the biggest events were held physically and that stopped. All events needed to move online. But now we're seeing things reopen. Now we're seeing you know sponsors come back to the category, brands reopen your experiential marketing. So it, it's it's all upside, right? If you look at the earnings reports from the major ad agency holding companies, the uh, you know client spends are opening back up, and today. 70 cents of every esports dollar comes from that sponsorship advertising piece of the pie. So that's super good news. And also, you're seeing mass acceptance of esports. It's now moving to more casual gamers from the core gamers. And that's where a company like Alpha is really going to benefit, right? That the existing legacy players in this space were about the most core gamers. And now the more casual gamers are coming and saying, I want to play esports just more casually, and they're looking for platforms where they feel more comfortable, where they can learn, where they can use a flywheel for skills improvement, for data exporting, for content exporting, and really dive into the space, right? Like the pro gamer is just like the teeniest tip of the iceberg above the waterline, and companies like Alpha and the industry are ready for this big below the waterline growth. And Let's revenue talk. follow these eyeballs in a big way. Yeah, let's let's discuss that uh, those platforms as you mentioned, uh, and specifically Alpha's platform. Tell us about Gamers Arena, what people can expect from it, and maybe where the concept came from. Sure, Gamers Arena is our competitive gaming platform. It was developed a couple of years ago by an entrepreneur who actually has a background in finance, who who looked at this this category as a, as an opportunity. Right, he saw the number of eyeballs ending up in esports and said, "There's a business here." We at Alpha have built a flywheel of the platform, which is Gamers Arena, and our partnerships across major sports organizations and universities and media companies like Barstool. And then there are the tools and the data insights that people get on the platform. That flywheel increases participation, it increases engagement, and it increases monetization. So we've built this platform for a more casual player. I don't know if you saw the announcement yesterday, but we announced Gamers Arcade, which is much like skills, right? So if we had gamers 
arena, which is for the more core player. We now have Gamers Arcade, which is for the more casual player in economies where console games may not be the number one source of gaming time spent, or if you're a more casual gamer who would rather play on your phone or another device. So we really think that we've built the ecosystem for where this category is headed. And, and everybody, you know, I mean, I have one sitting here with me right now. So everyone's never far from those devices, right? So it's, uh, you know, a great angle to kind of pull in more of, a, uh, of an audience. Uh, going forward then, from an investor standpoint, you know, as the world, I mean, hopefully we get back to something that resembles where we were pre-pandemic. What do we see next from Alpha Esports? What you see next from Alpha Esports is you see us continue to build out the pieces of this flywheel, right? We're going to add more spokes. So if Gamers Arcade said we are committed to launching something that speaks to, you know, non-high GDP markets or the non-core gamer, you may see acquisitions or launches around skills building, around data, around content exporting, around coaching or training. You're going to see additional partnerships, right? Like we've announced partnerships with organizations like the New Jersey Devils or the Vancouver Whitecaps or Barstool Sports, you're going to see other brands and companies come aboard because there's huge FOMO in the esports space, unbelievable FOMO. You'll see some acquisitions potentially. And also we recently launched AlphaCoin, which is our way to get into the cyber currency world. Our target audience, Gen Y and Gen Z, is still obsessed with cyber currency. And you know, if you look at platforms like Cash App, Right where they've now added cyber currency as a way to you know split dinner with your friends, it's going to be an increasingly important piece of the monetization of esports. ELPA guys listed here in Canada on the Canadian Securities Exchange. Jonathan Anastas, chairman of the board at uh, Alpha Esports. A pleasure. Uh, we appreciate your time. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks, Thanks for, for having me. Today. Have a great day. There we go, guys. Uh, ALPH, as I said, uh, on the CSE here in Toronto, guys.